So I am out of the hospital. I don't think I ever anticipated kind of bringing you guys along throughout my journey of that hospitalization, but you know, I'm kind of glad I did. I'm kind of glad that I was able to kind of show the journey, I guess, through getting hospitalized and well, navigating a psychotic episode and kind of sharing what the experience is like and hopefully helping to destigmatize it, demystify it a little bit. And so I guess I am filming this video as kind of a cap to the journey in terms of what coming home has been like. So this is my first day, first full day home. I came home yesterday. I spent eight days in the hospital following a psychotic episode and basically my hospitalization was just to kind of stabilize me on additional antipsychotics and raise my my usual antipsychotics as well, just to kind of kick me out of psychosis. And generally speaking, when I'm hospitalized, this is a pretty quick process for me. I generally respond pretty well to heavy doses of antipsychotics. Um, so I'm glad, I'm grateful that it was only eight days to kind of get out of psychosis and be stable enough to be able to come home. Um, you know, I kind of shared a bit throughout the last videos and I'll, I'll link to those, those three videos that I shared during the hospital process in the description, but if you want to go back and watch them, but I kind of talked about how I have trauma surrounding hospitalizations and they're not always the most comfortable experiences for me and I know for a lot of other people as well. And so there was definitely a very, very large part of me that wanted to leave hospital as soon as possible. And so now that I am out of hospital and kind of in hindsight, I maybe left a little bit early. I don't know if I was totally ready and stable to come back to the stresses of everyday life, just in terms of still kind of teetering on psychosis. I, I was in the main lobby of the hospital after being discharged and feeling like everything was just kind of on hyperdrive, just in terms of my sensory experience. And so that's an indication for me that there is still something a little bit off. But, you know, that said, I do think that being at home is a lot more conducive to me recovering than being in the hospital just because of all that trauma. And it's just, it's not a super stimulating environment. It's not a super It's not a super comforting, it's not a super therapeutic environment. Really what it was there for me for was to get me stabilized back on medications in a safe space. Now, you know, I also talked about in previous videos, having a hard time with feeling like falling back into psychosis, especially while I've been taking my meds and I've been doing everything right or so I thought, feeling as though that is a failure on my part. And I'm still grappling with that. Um, my last hospitalization was in 2019 and um, I was I was a little bit devastated for having my three year stretch of not being hospitalized come to an end there. And now this time it was a four year stretch that has now come to an end. And that feels, that feels hard because you know, I think I equate not being in hospital with being successful and um, being normal to a degree. And so having to be hospitalized again for my mental illness, for my schizoaffective disorder was just kind of a, a difficult reminder that there is something different about me. There is something different about my brain. I have a mental illness that can seriously affect my life. I think there's just a lot of those kinds of thoughts and emotions coming up around following, you know, being hospitalized for my schizoaffective disorder again. 
I'm really trying to be mindful of viewing this hospitalization as, you know, I I had a flare up in my illness. There was really nothing I could have done to prevent it other than perhaps just not experiencing any stress at all. But that's just not really possible as a human in the world. But I had a flare up in my illness and I needed, I needed medical attention to address that flare up and to get better again. And so really trying to look at it as, as, you know, a a medical illness that I just needed some help with. And now I can work on just being stable again and get back to the things that make me, me and get back to feeling like myself again, hopefully soon. And, you know, I know that it can be so difficult from my own experience and from hearing from other people to separate the mental illness from who you are. And I think that that becomes immensely more difficult when you have setbacks like being hospitalized or like an intense psychotic episode where it's really difficult to detangle who you are from what your illness is and how it affects who you, who you, not who you are, because it doesn't affect who you are, but it affects how you feel and how you engage and how you behave sometimes and how you think. And it can be really, really difficult to wade through that and come back to understanding who you are separate from the illness and understanding again, that it's just a medical illness that sometimes you have to have a little bit of extra help with or for. And so that's kind of what I'm just trying to focus on post-hospitalization, also just trying to kind of process everything. I think that I feel really grateful about how this hospitalization went because I, I think, well, actually every single hospitalization prior to this one has been immensely traumatic and has been a really combative and hostile experience. And a lot of that has to do with how I engaged in it. Some of that had to do with the care that was given or rather not given. A lot of it had to do with the the mindset that I went into the hospital with. And so I tried really hard to be open to receiving care for this medical illness that I needed a little bit of extra care for. And I tried to be really open to that and really, you know, we ju- I just had the interview with, um, with Emma McAdam, the, the woman who runs Therapy in a Nutshell, the YouTube channel, and she talked about willingness as a concept and that being a really important concept to work on in terms of, well, kind of in terms of everything, but especially with living with a mental illness and really being willing to, you know, work on the things that are challenges in front of you and really being willing to open yourself up to those things and willing to, to do what you have to do to feel better sort of thing. And so that's kind of the approach I really tried to take. There were times where I slipped back into some really paranoid ways of engaging with the hospital and the medical system. But for the most part, I feel like I did a much better job of trying to work with them rather than against them. And ultimately that led to better, more effective care. Definitely still not perfect. Our mental health care system is absolutely still very, very flawed, but you know, doing what I could do to make the experience better was helpful. I think post this hospitalization, I'm also still kind of grappling with how, how I'm supposed to trust my brain going forward. You know, when the way this psychotic episode came on really snuck up on me. And I suppose that's the way they all kind of come up on me in terms of not really realizing or being aware or having insight into the fact that I'm slipping into a different way of processing reality and a different way of 
thinking and feeling than is typical for me. And so I think that's something I'm going to do a lot more reflecting on in the coming weeks and maybe work with my therapist or my psychiatrist around how to identify earlier when there's those differences in my brain that are happening so that I can feel like I can trust myself and my brain and my mind better because that is something that is difficult to wrap my head around. And, you know, I talked about that in one of the other videos more extensively, but yeah, that's something I'm going to be thinking a lot more about in the coming weeks and trying to figure out how to, how to work better with my brain, I guess. So those are kind of my thoughts post-discharge, first day home. I'm really, really glad to just be home, be with my my kids right now. We only have my my one child, but all, all three of my kids came to visit in the hospital, which was really nice, but it's just not the same as being at home with them and, you know, being at home with my husband and just everything that comes with being at home. It's been really, really nice to be around my loved ones again and to be in the comfort of my own home. And so for that, I am very, very grateful. I also want to say a really, really big thank you to everyone who offered words of support or encouragement throughout the whole psychosis and hospitalization experience and, you know, keep to this day offering words of encouragement and support. It really means a lot. And I don't know, like I, I tried to share this experience in an effort to hopefully help even just one person feel less alone in their own experiences of navigating this sort of thing. And I heard from a lot of you that it did resonate with you and it did help you to feel less alone. And so that makes it all worth it. And that also helped me to feel less alone throughout the whole experience too. So thank you very, very much for that. So I think that's it for me today. If you missed any of the other three videos that I kind of put out throughout this process, you can check them out. The links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.